Hello, and welcome to a little optional video that I've put together here uh, to talk about how we can prove some of the spring equations. So, uh, in our lesson, uh, in our last lesson, uh, you might have seen that I was talking to a couple of students about uh, whether it's possible to mathematically verify these equations. We've done it experimentally, uh, but can we do it uh, with a bit of maths? Uh, and it turns out, yes, actually we can, um, and I've uh, put together this little uh, short video for you to try and show you how we can do this. Now, this isn't actually part of your course, and you won't be examined on these proofs. Um, so don't feel like you have to follow everything that goes on here. Um, however, um, if you're thinking about uh, applying to top tier universities or doing physics or engineering at uni, uh, this is kind of a, a nice little introduction to how we solve problems in, in real world physics. Um, so we've got to the point uh, where we have the equation kt is equal to k1 plus k2 for springs in parallel, and 1 over kt is equal to 1 over k1 plus 1 over k2 for springs in series. And we verify that those equations are correct, but can we prove why they should be those equations? And it turns out that actually it's not terribly difficult to do that. So we're going to start off by thinking about springs in series. Uh, I'm going to set up a couple of conventions here of how I'm going to name things, um, just to keep the mathematical terms clear. So I'm going to call this spring 1, so it will have a spring constant of k1. This will be spring 2, and it will have a spring constant of k2. Now I'm going to expose both of these to a force acting downward stretching them. Um, and one of the things that you'll learn when you do dynamics is that um, on a string, the force at any location along it, assuming it's light, uh, is the same at every location. So that means that I can say that spring K1 experiences the force F, and spring, K, and spring 2 also experiences that force. So the force is the same. Um, so that brings us to our first sort of fact that we can write down, and that is Ft, so we're going to call that T to be the total, so the force across both of them, that's equal to the force on spring 1, and that is equal to the force on spring 2. So all of those are equal. The second thing that we can talk about is the extension. So I'm going to call extension delta L. Now you might come across extension as E, uh, or X, or anything else, but in this case I'm going to use delta L. Uh, if you just remember this letter symbol here, delta, that's a Greek letter that means change in, so delta L means change in length. Now, when they're in, power, sorry, in series, both springs will stretch. So that means that I will get a delta L for spring 1, and I'm going to get a delta L for spring 2. So the second sort of key equation that I can write is that the total extension, which I'm going to call delta LT, that is made up of the extension of spring 1 plus the extension of spring 2. Um, so what we have now done is we've given ourselves two key equations. We're saying that the force on each spring is identical, and we're saying that the total extension is made up of the individual extensions of both the springs. Now, my other key thing to remember is Hooke's law. So that is the force on any spring, provided it obeys Hooke's law, is the force constant times extension. So what does that mean that I can do? Well. If I rearrange Hooke's law, that says that the extension of any spring is equal to the force on that spring divided by its force constant. So what that means is that I can rearrange my second key equation here and make it into that the change, no, sorry, the extension of the total is equal to the force on the total divided by the spring constant. Total, and that's that equivalent spring constant. Now this equation is still valid, so I can then rewrite uh, delta L1. Delta L1 will be the force on spring 1, divided by the spring constant of force 1. And then if I rewrite my third term, that will be delta L2 is equal to the force on spring 2, 
divided by the spring constant of spring 2. Now, if you remember what we said earlier, we said that on all of these, the forces are the same. Ft is equal to F1, which is equal to F2. So what it becomes is force over kt is equal to force over k1 plus force over k2. And because uh, these forces are identical, what I can do is divide both sides by f and just cancel it out of my equation. And that yields the equation 1 over kt is equal to 1 over k1 plus 1 over k2. And there we go. Relatively simply, we've verified that first spring equation. Um, and we've done it using some fairly simple maths, which is quite nice to do. So let's move on and think about springs in parallel. So I'm going to draw the same, a similar setup again. So I'll have my first spring, then my second spring, and this time they're in parallel, so they're joined together. So they experience a force acting down like that. I'm going to have K1, and I'm going to have K2. Now, with the force here, uh, the force, the total force on K1 and K2 must add up to the total force on the pair of springs. So the force is now going to be shared across these two springs. I can't say that the force is going to be shared equally, because if one spring is really stiff, then it's going to require more force than the other spring. Um, so I can't just say uh, F and K1 is a half F or anything like that, because I might have different spring constants, I don't know that. But what I can say is that the total force, Ft, is equal to the force on the first plus the force on the second. So that's my first key equation. The second thing I can say is, well, let's think about the extension here. So both of these will move down with delta Lt. But because the springs are tied together, because they're attached to each other, spring 2 will move with delta L2, and spring 1 will move with delta L1. Well, they're going to be the same, because both the springs are being pulled together, so they're going to extend by the same amount. So I can say, as my second key equation, that delta Lt is equal to delta L1, and that is equal to delta L2. So all three extensions are the same. So you can see I've kind of got the opposite of what I had before. In my first, in springs and series, I said that uh, the force of both of them is identical, whereas the extension, the uh, total extension is made up of the extension of 1 plus the extension of 2. Well, here I've done that the other way around. Um, so the same thing, let's just give ourselves a little reminder of Hooke's law. Hooke's law is that the force on a spring is equal to K delta L. Well, now what I'm going to do is rewrite uh, my force equation in terms of k delta l. So that becomes the total spring constant times the total extension. That's equal to f1. Well, f1 is k1 times the extension of spring 1. And then I'm going to add to that uh, spring 2. Well, the force on spring 2 is equal to the spring constant of spring 2 multiplied by the extension of spring 2. Now what we said from earlier is that all of these extensions are the same, so I can again rewrite this equation now as kt delta L is equal to k1 delta L is equal to, sorry, plus, not equal to, plus k2 and again, because all of those delta L's are the same, I can divide both sides by delta L, count some delta L's, and it simply becomes kT is equal to k1 plus k2. And there you have it. Using just a couple of lines of maths in both cases, we can actually go ahead and prove those spring equations. Now, 
If you remember the lesson, you will remember that it was not that simple the first time. Um, in fact, this is the second time I've had to shoot this video, because the first time I forgot to turn on the audio. Um, and I've done it a lot quicker the second time than I did the first time. Um, and again, that kind of tells us a lot about how physics is in the real world. Um, the answers are obvious, are often obvious once we know what they are, but actually deriving them can be quite tricky. And that's why it's really, really important that you do verify these equations through experiments. Now, you've already done that. You should have found um, that these, these equations hold up pretty well. Um, but it's nice to know that we can also prove that they're consistent with what we understand about maths. Um, in the next lesson, we're going to be playing around with Young's modulus, um, but I'm also going to start giving you some past paper questions on this. Um, so, this kind of sort of technique is often quite useful for solving uh, past exam problems, but we'll talk a little bit more about that in class. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in our next lesson.